Thank you, Leah. And uh, I'd like to uh, first thank the organizers for the opportunity to present uh, the latest or, or recent and ongoing work from our lab um, on uh, the, the integration of multiple data types for virus discovery. Uh, about 10 to 15 percent of cancers worldwide are caused by are caused by viruses, and there are uh, several virus types which we know uh, which are associated with uh, with cancer. The role of others are are controversial. Um, one of the one of the things that viruses um, uh, do is integrate into the host genome, uh, and um, whereas others remain um, episomal and do not integrate. Uh, one of the questions that we wish to address in this study is, what is the role of integration in gene expression, and also, how is integration um, associated with gene initiation and progression? That's a broader question. And then, more broadly yet, the, the questions we wish to, uh, to address are, uh, even though viruses, many types of viruses are ubiqu ubiquitous in the human population, cancer is not. So a large question is, why do some people get cancer and others do not? The TCGA data uh, provides a rich source by which we can uh, start to address some of these questions. This is a graph of uh, samples which are available um, for various uh, diseases uh, and with various um, data types. Uh, for this particular work, I will be focusing on uh, four different types of cancer. Um, all of these have uh, viruses um, known, uh, known to be associated with viruses to one degree or another. Uh, and we'll be looking at uh, bladder, cervical, head and neck, as well as stomach uh, cancer. So a brief just overview of the particular pipeline that we've developed for this work. We start off with RNA-seq data, which is aligned to a human reference, and we extract the unmapped reads, which are then aligned to a, uh, using BLAST to a large, um, to, to a large virus database. Uh, this then allows us to, um, uh, this is the virus discovery part of the analysis, and it allows us to form a small uh, select virus reference which includes just the viruses of interest. We then um, have, uh, we started with whole genome, um, whole genome data, which is initially aligned to the human reference, and we realign it to this select virus reference, which includes the virus and the human uh, reference. And also for the cervical work, um, in particular, we use um, uh, uh, cervical um, uh, sequences which, um, uh, which are aligned uh, with, uh, uh, created with HPV probes and are aligned uh, to the HPV reference uh, to start with. And we use these data to um, query viral integration. So just to give a broad overview of the uh, viral patterns that we observe in different uh, cancer types. Uh, in bladder cancer, uh, only about 5%, um, only about 5% of uh, uh, the cancers are associated with, with uh, virus, and these are the uh, human papilloma viruses, the various herpes viruses, and also BK polyoma. Whereas in cervical cancer, um, nearly all, uh, all cancers are associated with uh, some form of uh, HPV. Uh, for head and neck, uh, about 85 percent are have no virus, with um, HPV 60 and 33 being dominant, and then stomach cancer has about 10 percent EBV. So to analyze the integration, we um, we use a, a reference that has um, a human genome as well as uh, the select virus, uh, and. Typically, read pairs will align uh, to adjacent locations in the, um, um, in the genome uh, near one another, uh, whether it's human or virus. On occasion, though, we'll find a discordant read pair where one of the reads maps to the human and one of the reads maps to the virus. And it's these discordant read pairs that we then analyze in order to, um, uh, to look at uh, for evidence of integration. And in particular, we take the coordinates of the um, the uh, genomic position of the human read as well as of the virus read, and we construct a coordinate of, a, of one point which corresponds to one uh, discordant read pair. Um, we then look at a, a number of such, um, uh, of such read pairs, and uh, clusters um, of such discordant read pairs then correspond to evidence of viral integration. 
And these can be identified both visually as well as using uh, tools uh, such as Pindel. So looking at viral integration, we find that um, for EBV viruses, we, um, there are, uh, we haven't found any integration events. For viruses, um, for HPV-18, in all the cases we looked at, we did find um, integration. Uh, for the uh, other HPV viruses, um, about half to two-thirds are integrated. So for the next few slides, um, I will now drill down into a specific sample um, and analyze that in further detail. And this particular sample, it's a uh, head and neck uh, sample um, which has 118 uh, discordant pairs which map to uh, three different uh, clusters. Um, and the, um, the, these clusters map to human chromosome 14. Um, uh, you, uh, we, we can now map the, uh, this onto the, um, the gene, and these, uh, th this cluster uh, providing evidence of integration um, is on the RAD51B gene, which is a um, DNA repair gene which has been associated with uh, virus integration uh, in the past. Uh, the, j just to give you a sense of scale, this is about uh, the, the viral chromosome, uh, the viral genome is about uh, roughly 8,000 base pairs. This, um, uh, this I'm showing is a section of about 150 uh, kilobase pairs uh, in that dimension. Uh, this particular gene extends uh, further out in both directions, and there is one um, exon which is, uh, uh, which is visible here uh, with that location, and the integration takes place in the intronic section. We can now, uh, you might have to turn your head to see this, right? But uh, we can now look at the, um, the copy number um, along the uh, chromosome 14. And what we find is that outside of the integration region, uh, the copy number is, uh, is, is roughly two. Within um, this particular section of the uh, integration, the copy number is, uh, uh, is about 15, and then there's a smaller section here where the copy number is about four. Uh, we, we can draw lines to guide the eye from the discordant read pairs um, to, the, um, uh, to the chromosome, and what we find is that the, um, the discordant read pairs map onto um, uh, very precisely onto boundaries in the um, uh, in regions of the copy number, and we find this to be uh, pretty uh, uh, basically um, uh, very commonly seen, uh, and we find copy number increases in integration sites in about two thirds of the cases. Um, for the remaining one-third of the cases, we see uh, with about equal probability uh, co copy number decreases or no copy number changes. We can also look at the copy number of, of the virus, um, and this scale here is about uh, copy number of 30. Um, one of the things that we observe is a, is, is a deletion of a section of the virus. The, um, the circular HPV um, virus, as it integrates into the uh, host cell DNA, very frequently loses a section um, as it integrates, and this is the, the last section that you see here. The, um, the, the copy number is a little, bit more, uh, a little bit more noisy than what we observe, but um, for the human chromosome, but once again, the, um, the discordant read pairs uh, tend to map onto uh, regions of differing uh, uh, copy number sections. We can also look at, uh, construct a histogram of the copy number, uh, and in particular I'll be looking at the blue line, um, blue histogram here corresponding to um, the virus, and what we find is that there are two distinct peaks uh, in the copy number histogram, and this suggests that there are two distinct viral populations which um, are found in this sample. We can also look at the, um, uh, the viral genes, uh, located here on the horizontal axis, as well as the RNA expression of these genes. Um, and what we find, uh, which is commonly seen, is that the E6 and the E7 viral oncogenes are expressed at a high level with the remaining genes being um, at a relatively low level. And we can also look at the, um, uh, the expression of the RAD51B gene over here. Um, on the left is a, uh, is a distribution of the RSCM 
um, expression level uh, for here for tumors, a, a population of uh, head and neck tumors, and here on the right, a population of head and neck normals. And for this particular case that we're looking here, the uh, RSCM expression is, um, the gene expression is, is very high. And we can actually look in more detail at, um, at the expression patterns. Here is now a plot of um, per exon um, RNA expression for the 15 exons which uh, cons compose uh, the RAD51B gene. And in red is the, um, the per exon expression level of the particular sample we're looking at. And then the teal color corresponds to uh, the other head and neck tumor samples uh, under consideration. And what we find is that um, downstream of the integration site, the, um, the expression level uh, per exon is uh, very high for, uh, for this particular sample, whereas upstream, it tends to be normal. So uh, this provides evidence that the uh, viral integration upregulates the downstream uh, expression or, or the expression of the downstream exons. To look at this in a little bit more, in a little bit more detail, um, here is now essentially the same data, uh, but I'm plotting the a normalized um, uh, per exon expression level. It's normalized so that a, a value of zero corresponds to a, an average expression level. And now I'm plotting these versus position. With the integration event here, um, drawn here in red, um, and then this is uh, for uh, a million base pairs on either side of the uh, integration site. And here are the various genes um, that are found there. What we find, once again, is that downstream the viral, um, downstream of the, of the viral integration event, the, um, uh, the exon expression is, is quite high. The next question we want to, s to see is, is this a general pattern um, observed, or is this something that we see just in this particular case? And so here is um, a distribution of um, peroxone expression for, um, uh, for samples in which, uh, which, which have a copy number increase in the, um, uh, uh, in, in the integration site. And we consider um, the expression upstream uh, for uh, 100,000 uh, base pairs um, it, within the integration site and also downstream of the integration. What we find is that upstream of the integration event, uh, we tend to find uh, the distribution, uh, it's relatively broad, but it has a significant population both below and above um, zero. Whereas within the integration event, uh, where there is a copy number increase, we find that the um, uh, per exon expression is, uh, tends to be upregulated. And downstream, it tends to be uh, upregulated as well, generally speaking. So this is for a copy number increase. And we can also consider um, uh, expression for copy number uh, decreases. And what we find is that within the integration site, the uh, per exon expression is uh, downregulated. Uh, upstream, it uh, tends to be around zero. And there are two different populations, upstream is around zero, there are two different populations um, with uh, a population around zero and then a population with a significantly increased expression. So to summarize, uh, we've developed a pipeline uh, which allows the integration of multiple data types um, uh, for the analysis of uh, viral integration. Um, we use RNA-seq for virus discovery as well as for expression analysis, and whole genome data as well as exome data for integration analysis. And we've constructed a uh, unified visual representation which allows us to combine visually for one sample um, uh, these integration events. Um, and finally, we've illustrated a close association between virus integration, uh, copy number domains, and expression levels. And with that, I would like to uh, thank my PI, Li Ding, as well as the other um, lab members and, and others who have contributed uh, to this project. And I'd like to thank you, and uh, um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Um, have you looked at um, what distinguishes tumors which have integration versus those which don't have integrated virus in terms of 
whether there's a different mutational spectrum or other alterations in the non-integrated tumors that um, might predispose them to survive without integration. And what the reason I ask is that um, there have been a number of reports over the years that tumors that are um, that are HPV positive um, have a portion of the tumor that becomes HPV negative and progresses, or cell lines that have HPV in vitro initially lose HPV and still maintain an immortal state. Um, so do you, do you have any insight into that? Uh, the question being, uh, are we observing the differences uh, uh, between uh, uh, tumors where there is viral integration and uh, wh whether there is not. Uh, we started looking at uh, doing various clinical correlations uh, uh, between these. Um, I'd say that right now uh, it's, it's still in the early stage of the analysis and we haven't uh, observed any, uh, any particular differences yet, but that's something that actually is an ongoing work. Sure. Uh, very nice talk and really nice analysis on, on the details of, of viral integration and expression. Just want to point a couple papers in the literature for you. One is um, focused on analysis of TCGA data, and it's from um, Eric Larson's lab, I think a former uh, postdoc of, of Chris Sanders that was in Nature Communications last year. Um, another is from our group, um, from uh, Akino Jacina and Chandra Padamalu on cervical cancer uh, in Nature uh, at the end of last year. And, and both of those. I, you know, I just noticed one of the genes that you mentioned, RAD51B, for example, both of those papers highlight that. That's right, of course. Is, is this pipeline available online? Uh, is this pipeline available online to the public? I'm sorry? Is this pipeline available online to the public? Uh, this is something that's under development uh, right now. Um, I expect that it will be made available. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in the case, this RAD51, uh, where you see the later exons being highly expressed, right. are they part of a fusion with, with some HPV gene? We, we haven't, um, the short answer is I'm not sure. I, we, we haven't analyzed that. Um, Let's thank uh, all the speakers one more time, please. Thank you. So this concludes our session, and now uh, Matt uh, Myerson and Marco Mara will uh, make some uh, closing remarks. <laughs>